Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everybody had a good weekend, had a nice Saturday uh, off. Um, we had our guys away Saturday, and then they had their treatments on Sunday. Uh, we'll get back at it uh, this afternoon. Going back and looking at, at the film, I uh, was really excited and really pleased with the way the guys responded to the week that we laid out for them. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, when you play on away a on, on Saturday before of what you do Sunday through Thursday to get yourself ready to go on Friday. And I thought our kids were, were fresh, they were fast, they were physical uh, on Friday night so that they, uh, I thought they did a great job of executing the plan that we laid out for them from a practice standpoint, recovery standpoint, film standpoint, walkthrough. We did a couple extra walkthroughs in lieu of practice uh, and I think it helped our guys. I think they were really fresh and I thought we played really fast. Um, it was a good football team that uh, we beat uh, even on their first drive. I thought they just executed. I didn't think we had guys making mistakes. I thought they just executed at a high level. Uh, and then for us to answer that uh, on our first drive was, was really big. And uh, we talked about it on Friday night, the, the couple difference maker plays that came in that game. But now we got to flip the page and start conference play. And uh, tough environment going to Provo. Uh, a lot of respect for... Kalani and uh, BYU, it's going to be a heck of a heck of an atmosphere and a, and a great test for us. Guess I'm going first. Um, this game's obviously going to be played up in the mountains. Is there anything you can do to prepare these guys for elevation? Boy, two weeks ago we were talking about humidity and heat, and now we're talking about being cool and elevated. What a crazy league we're in. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I know that Scott Troush and – uh, our nutritionists and, and Mindy and athletic training have talked about some things um, that we're going to do with the guys, but uh, uh, it, it's probably not in that short period of time. You know, I, it, it, it's interesting because it, you look at the forecast, and I think it'll be an old lineman's dream because it's probably going to be in the 50s by kickoff. But uh, um, you know, it's something that uh, we're we're aware of. We're doing some things with our guys, but uh, it, it'll be another element we have to handle been a very effective uh, touchdown weapon for you guys in the red zone this season. What do you think that is after you've looked at three games? Um, I think they're doing a great job of, of selling some run fakes and then getting open uh, because we we have similar actions that we're running the football uh, out of a couple of those wheel routes that uh, Lofton's caught and then Swanee caught the one uh, on a scramble rule. But uh, – uh, I think they're doing a really good job of selling run. I think they're doing a, a really good job of, of finding windows and, and being big targets for Avery. And Avery's got a lot of confidence in those guys too. When you went back and watched film, um, did any players kind of jump out about you know, maybe we didn't mention after the game that had really good nights? Um, boy, we mentioned a lot of guys. So you must be thinking of one. Uh, I thought Sam Hecht played really well. Uh, I thought he played one of his best games. Um, he's one I look at there. I thought Toby played a really good, really good game and, and played more snaps. Um, Austin Romaine always plays really well, and he made some good plays as well. Um, but uh, you know, collectively, we just at every position improved and got better. Uh, also, Keenan Garber comes back for the bonus year. Um, struggled a little bit at Tulane, but came back and maybe maybe made a game-changing play. Uh, his, how's his perseverance been paid off? Yeah. It was a game-changing play, and uh, excited for for Keenan to have that success. And he, you know, he's an old player for us, but he's only been a, a corner for since the, late in the 2022 season. So uh, I'm so pleased that he came back. It's been a huge addition for us to get him back, as well as some of these other older guys. But uh, that was a that was a big-time play, and he's getting more and more confident. He's always been comfortable, but he's getting more and more confident in our defense. Play counts are down across college football. Possessions are down. Does that make anything more important because of that, such as red zone or anything like that? Yeah, I mean we're still um, looking at it. We got a few more plays this week, but you're you're right. The value of possessions, and that's one of many factors which made us go for it on fourth and one that early in the game. Um, the fact that they took eight minutes off the clock and you couldn't give it right back to them. Um, as as well as you know, making those red zone possessions count, and um, we haven't had a ton of opportunities to go for it on fourth down. We've had a couple, 
um, you know, whether that or kicking a field goal and, and the team we're going to play is going to go for it on fourth down. BYU's done a really good job. They've been really efficient on fourth down. Um, but uh, without a doubt, with, with the clock not stopping uh, after first downs until the final two minutes, it, it, the game's going by a little bit quicker. A good defensive performance. What position group did you think kind of played the best? Um, I don't think we had a position group that didn't play well. I, I, it'd be hard for me to say. Um, I think the most impressive thing was the amount of guys of the backups that we consider basically starters that played really good snaps for us. Um, so across the board at all three levels, I thought we played really well on defense. You mentioned, <clears throat> excuse me, you mentioned the tight ends, and you know we've seen a lot of two tight end personnel looks this year. What sort of challenges does that present to a defense when you guys can go? you know, two tight ends and, and play with a little bit more, I guess, heavy personnel out there. Yeah, um, it's really common in two tight ends. A lot of other schools do a, a decent amount. Uh, we got into some three tight end sets last week, which you don't see as much, and we got into those a handful of times, which uh, the plays we ran out of those were effective. Um, sometimes it changes personnel. For us, it doesn't change personnel. It can change personnel, but maybe changes some of the calls you make. Uh, but 12 personnel, the two tight ends, and 11 personnel, the one tight end, and three wideouts are what you see the most in college football and what we do. So, you know, from an offense and defensive standpoint, we get enough work out of both uh, and doing against, against our defense and our defense sees enough against our offense. Looking at BYU, when you look at their stadium and you look at their city, uh, it's a tough place to play. They win a lot of games there. What makes it so tough there? I was there once in, I think, 2008 when I was at UNI, and I remember how loud it was. I remember how gorgeous the setting was. And uh, I, I know that football is really important at BYU in – um, they've had great tradition of football, and they're off to a 3-0 and start. So I think that that as well as the fact it's a great setting, it's a night game, it's on ESPN, uh, it's going to attract a lot of viewers and attract a lot of fans. But the fact that you've got two undefeated teams that are playing pretty well now, um, I think it's just going to be a great atmosphere for college football. Back to defense, Arizona averaged 42 points a game. You hold them out of the end zone every possession after their first mm -hmm. one. How impressive was that? It was really impressive against that type of an offense and the and how explosive they are. And um, I didn't realize that they had maybe the longest winning streak in 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 Power Four football, or I don't know, FB, I don't even know. But I heard that they had a long. I don't pay attention to that stuff, and then it came across. Um, you, you don't do that by accident. Uh, you do that by playing really good defense and scoring a lot of points, and they'd been doing that. Um, There's a lot of veterans on that team, which made it all more impressive what we did defensively. Limiting the run really helped us. After that first drive, we really limited their success rushing the football, which allowed us to play a lot more people in coverage or pressure the passer, which we had a hard time sacking him, but everybody has a hard time sacking him because he's such a great scrambler. But we had a lot of pressure on him, put some hits on him that uh, um, you know made it difficult for them to sustain drives. I was going to ask you about the <clears throat> the pressure on the quarterback. I think just the one sack, but I think got eight hurries. Yeah, and it seems like the first two games you've also put a lot of pressure. How how good has have those ends been? So yeah, far? everybody up front's doing a really good job, and we're f running in a lot of guys. Yeah, Mott had the really good sack, and that was on a rush three. Uh, Mott just beat his guy and made a big time play. But we got a lot of hits on that quarterback because. We stayed upfield in our in our rush lane. We had really good what we call lane integrity by not giving him the outside and and making him have to retreat quite a bit to get to, to the edge and and um, maybe have him throw the ball a little bit quicker or sooner than he wanted to. But that's the benefit of having so many guys that were playing there on the defensive line, both at tackle and end, and, and we needed all those bodies and. You know, the other thing that we're fortunate on is we're knock on wood staying healthy there so we can keep guys fresh. One other question, uh, really quick. Um, uh, Big 12 named Dylan Special Teams Player of the Week. I was wondering if you might be able to comment on that. Uh, what a great award for him. And he would tell you the same thing great award for our punt return team because there were some really good blocks 
uh, on that punt return. And we all know that you just give Dylan a little bit of crease or some green grass. He can uh, he's going to make some things happen. But uh, I thought we blocked extremely well. That was a total team effort on that return. Great return. Great job circling the def- circling the the coverage by Dylan, and really good job sustaining blocks. I want to ask you a couple questions about the offense. I want to first start with Connor and the growth maybe you've seen from him in three weeks? Um, yeah, I mean, we we kind of made a point to be more aggressive this week, uh, and I think we were. We also just are playing. We played a little bit better, and, you know, there's there's a lot to continuity up front, and um, even though we had some guys that had played some, uh, we hadn't had a lot of guys that played together as much, and so that was that was – Good to see. I think Riles did some really good things um, with Avery uh, and getting him on the edge and, and creating some issues, I think, uh, on defense. Uh, and then uh, throwing the ball a little bit uh, on first down. And then being able to stay on the field on third down, you know, that that's calls. And, and Riles will tell you the same thing. That's protection and execution. And we executed a couple really nice times on third down and critical. We had a uh, kind of a crossing dig route to to Keegan. That was a huge play at, at a time. And then um, Avery scrambled out, and Jace did a great job of finding a, a, a hole in there. And those two have great chemistry anyway. And he caught it, made it a forty yard gain. So, you know, we have to be able to make some explosive plays, and we were able to do that via the run and pass. Part of that was the offensive line. You mentioned, yeah. you know, playing together in that. Rush for over 200 yards. How do you feel about the consistency of the run blocking as opposed to maybe the pass blocking? How do that, those yeah, stand we're, out? Yeah, we're continuing to improve. I think there's more in us. In fact, I know there's more in us with those guys up front. And, and we're solidly playing seven guys with Line Gang and, and Pastore that are, that are really starters as well uh, and keeping those guys fresh. And, and we're able to move some guys around, you know, we don't have to have John just replace uh, Kilty. He can replace Carver. Uh, Liney can replace either guard spot, which is really good. So we're able to keep those guys fresh, and and we know we need all those guys. And so uh, I, I've been pleased with uh, the continuity. I've been pleased with, and you know, we've been good with not having a bunch of penalties there. Um, and that's got to continue as we go into a hostile environment with false starts and delay games, and 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 we've really got to work the noise and. Um, our offensive line is going to be a big part of that. Just one more quick one, if you don't mind. Damian McIntosh and just where he's at in, in the progression of becoming more of a an impact guy here. Do- Donovan, you're saying? Do- yeah, did I say that wrong? Yeah, Donovan, Damian, I'm sorry. Donovan McIntosh? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, well, he was a big factor on that punt return for a touchdown. And he's been really dominant on that role. Now, what we just got to do with Donnie Mac is get him – progressing more than that being a role. He's a really good football player, and we need him to play a little bit more on defense. We need him to play a little bit more on teams. And I think when you do something, even if you're on, you know, you're blocking a, a gunner on punt is a valuable, valuable role. And I think as he sees confidence in himself doing that, he's going to continue to get better on defense. I thought the kid had phenomenal coverage on the play they replayed for a long time. You, you can't cover a kid better than that. And he found a way – uh, to drop it in there, and the kid made a great catch. Luckily, his foot was out of bounds, but he is getting better and better. Three games, BYU's passing game has put up some yards. Anything unique or interesting stand out I about that? I think the quarterback's a really talented guy. Um, it'll be one of the better dual threat guys we've faced thus far uh, as far as – you know, we've had guys like the T- T- Tulane guy scrambled to throw. Um, I think this guy's in, in obviously Arizona scrambled to throw. This guy's going to scramble, throw it, scramble, and run. And then you're going to see some design runs for him too. And so that's probably the biggest adjustment for us is, and, and we get that enough from our own offense with whatever quarterback that we're going against with our defense. We've got to be able to try to slow him down. It's going to be difficult because he's a terrific football player, but we he can't beat us with the explosive run or the explosive pass play, and that's going to be a big challenge. What does BYU present defensively? I think they're physical. Uh, I think they're really sound. Um, defensive coordinator uh, – Jay Hill was the head coach at Weber State when I was the head coach at North Dakota State, so I've known him for a while. He's a uh, a great defensive mind. 
Um, they mix it up between man and zone. They're just so disruptive, physical, and they run to the football. It's what you expect out of out of that type of a defense and with Jay as well as Kalani that those guys just play so hard and they're so physical and they've they've really dominated their three opponents on defense. That's that's the big thing. I mean SMU is a really good offensive football team and they just stoned them the whole game. There was a couple of plays they gave up, but man did they they won the line of scrimmage and that's gonna be the challenge this week is can we neutralize that and, and um, we're going to lose some battles, but can we win some more of those one-on-one -on -one battles? Because that's what it's going to come down to is the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball and who wins more one-on-one -on -one battles. Uh, to go back to Kellis's first question about the altitude, how much does the team depth that you guys have kind of developed going to help with no matter how you guys react to it, yeah. having the extra bodies out there to throw? Well, it, it helps, but now we're, you know, we get controlled a little bit. You know, t at Tulane, we took everybody. Um, at home games, we get everybody. Now we've got to make some decisions. You know, we're we're playing close to 65 guys. Well, you're not playing all the quarterbacks that go. You're not playing all the specialists that go. You're not playing all the extra offensive linemen that go. It's going to be a big thing for us this week to decide who's going to get on that plane with us and and what else can they do. Um, if you're a, if you're to Toby and Jordan Allen. I mean, you got to help us on kickoff or kickoff return. If you're those tight ends, you got to help us in another phase as well. So, um, you know, we've got a few guys nicked up. Nobody's ruled out right now. We have, do have a few guys banged up that uh, we'll see how they progress this week. But uh, hopefully we get all those guys uh, healthy and ready to go. I don't see why they won't because uh, maybe a, a kid or two will be out today. But our hope is they're back by Wednesday. How do you think the team has handled success and uh... – just kind of the, some of the notoriety that came after the last win. Well, um, it's still early in the season, so uh, you know I, I don't think of it as handle success. Handling expectations is harder than handling success and failure. Expectations are what got us a little bit, I think, early on. That and to to what we said with Wyatt, the the chemistry and getting guys playing together. Um, you're only as good as your last snap period you're only as good as your last snap and what we did yesterday pales in the comparison to what we can do today and if we think that we've arrived we are going to go there and get throttled absolutely throttled so that's our job as coaches to make sure that we stay grounded I think we have a bunch of humble kids I think we have a bunch of hungry guys I think we have a bunch of guys that know that they are blue collar dudes that have not arrived but that's what we have to make sure of is, yeah, we, we've, we've won three games, which is awesome, but we haven't done anything yet. And I would say it, but I, I, I don't want to – I don't think I can say it. True has a pretty good thing when the guys ask him, how, how are you think we're doing or what have we done so far? And, and True's got a pretty good answer for him. So I don't even know if Avery would share that one with you. <laughs> I also wanted to ask, you got a very late kick this week. Get into Provo or wherever around there – on Friday, and you got to wait all that time to play. How do you how do you fill that time? Um, well, we're figuring that out a little bit. Um, two things on it: we had a long time this week to sit around too. When you thought of all day Thursday and all day Friday, so in essence, it's another hour and a half more than what we did this Friday. I thought we had a really good plan for this Friday. Granted, we were at home, but we're gonna. Uh, kind of take that plan that we had on Friday and take it on the road to Provo. And that's the thing that I, I, I'm i counting on and I'm pretty confident in is that the leaders that we have, they'll make sure that we take that plan that we had on Friday because, guys, uh, w Friday was as good a day as you could have had prior to 7 o'clock. And there's a lot of things that go into that. And when you have the leaders that we have – we're going to take what we did on Friday and do it in Provo on Saturday. Uh, it's just going to be a little bit later.